just wanted to challenge the Secretary of State in terms of the way in which the private sector seeks to engage with DFID. Sometimes it's difficult to have the story of the private sector understood. Um, it, it would probably be fair to say some of our encounters with officials have not been entirely productive uh, in terms of perceptions of understanding the value to business of contribution, which isn't just about financial return. And there's a big issue around communicating that effectively. Brilliant. Well, I, I mean, I really welcome those comments, and part of what we're doing in Diffid is changing ourselves, is, is going through a process of working out how we want to work with business. And it does feel different, and it does feel new. And it's one of the reasons I've set as a challenge of doing this much better in the future, but part of it is how we liaise with business, how we work with business, well, it, okay. is a, it, it is a pretty fundamental shift, right? I mean, for development agencies like DFID that were, for many, many years, structured to give grant aid, to put out contracts, to perhaps provide funds to multilateral institutions, this is a, a whole new business model, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think there's a, a significant element of this that is outside of what we've currently looked at. We've got a, we've got a real challenge around saying... How does DFID work with the private sector? How can also the mechanisms that we use gradually evolve and change? So in, in the past, in certain countries, you might have predominantly done a conventional grant aid program. Mm -hmm. We are increasingly saying, well, actually, maybe the right thing to do if we're doing more investment style work, because it's about economic development, it's more about growth, is return capital. So we can put some odor money in there, but we'll expect it back mm -hmm. with some kind of a return. It may be very small, but we'll want to reinvest it. So we'll try and tailor these programs as, as, a, as a, an economy and as a country moves along and develop, you know, is it a different stage in the development pipeline? We'll tailor, if you like, the economic development program, but also how we deliver it to, to match where the country is. And I think there's a real recognition that as countries transition, we have to transition our strategy with them. I think on that point, it's useful to bring up the Global Partnership for Development Effectiveness. I don't know how widely known that is. It's something set up, I think, just about a year ago at mm -hmm. the OECD. You are co-chair, one of three. Can you tell us a bit more about this partnership? What does it actually mean? What do you expect to gain from it? So the Global Partnership is about, is about getting people back together in, con in the context of 2015 and focusing on the key areas where we think we can work together more smartly. A big part of that is business, because that's one of the new dynamics in development that I think people want to understand how to work more effectively together. But another part, for example, would be knowledge sharing between the South, South countries. So, for example, the knowledge that, say, Brazil or Mexico, which is one of the reasons why we're having the partnership meeting there, they, they've been through a big transition already. They've got huge amounts of development experience to offer other countries who are still going through development. How can we marshal that more effectively?